Hello everyone, here we talk about F, test statistic and its applications. F test statistic is used for testing population variances. The result come from observations of multiple samples from multiple population. Simply consider two populations. We pick up a random simple sample for each population we come out two independent random samples, and each random samples give us sample variance. And we use these two sample variance to do the ratio, give us this F test statistic. It follows F distribution with degree freedom one come from the top sample, and the degree freedom two come from the bottom sample. We can imagine it is kind of like F test statistic comes from chi-square test statistic. We use this F test statistic to test hypothesis about standard deviation or variance. So if we look at two population standard deviation, we simply test if they are equal. So the null hypothesis and alternative hypothesis being written as this way. This is two-sided hypothesis testing. We can also consider one-sided or one-tailed hypothesis testing. And they can be transformed as the description by using variance. So two-sided hypothesis or one-sided hypothesis. Fact, F distribution is formed by the ratio of two independent chi-square variables. F distribution is determined by two degrees of freedom. Basic assumptions still kept. We assume two populations are normally distributed. The sample are randomly and independently selected. For convenience, we could always place the larger sample variation in the new meter on the top of the ratio, and we place the smaller one at the bottom of the ratio. So in that case, we can come out F, test the statistic value is bigger than 1, and then give us the idea. Most of the time, we can just do the one-tailed right side of hypothesis testing. Here we have the chart shows the F distribution curve and the rejection region based on the logic. If we are handling one-tailed hypothesis testing and we have significance level alpha is located the tailed area on the right side. For convenience, if we really handle two-sided testing, and we simply cut it in half of the significance level alpha. In that case, we only consider half alpha on the right side of the little tail, and we're still doing the similar kind of F test for the right sided test model only. So we ended up the rejection region by F test statistic is bigger than the critical value. That means if F test statistic value is far away from the center value, we reject null hypothesis. If it is not, and then we cannot reject null hypothesis. For F critical value, based on significance level alpha or half alpha, we can easily find the critical value by using Excel function. Here it is. Make sure the degrees of freedom from the top part of the sample and the second degree of freedom from the second part of the sample. The order matters in this case. Here's an example. The soft drink bottling company is considering two new filling machines and is interested in determining whether there's a difference in population standard deviation. To perform the test, 10 bottles from machine 1 
and eight bottles from machine two were selected, and the fill volumes were measured. The sample standard deviation were 0.5 ounces and 0.45 ounces for machine one and two, respectively. By using significance level 5%, we perform this hypothesis test. Here's our model. We testing whether the two populations have equal standard deviation. It can be simply transformed to hypothesis model whether the two populations have equal variance. And we use 5% as significance level with the provided sample variance and we can calculate the F ratio 1.2346. With first degree freedom, 10 minus 1 give us 9. The second degree freedom, 8 minus 1 give us a 7. And we can find out the critical value by considering half alpha on the right side only. So we have F critical value 4.8232. In that case, F test statistic value is smaller than F critical value. We cannot reject now hypothesis. Here's another example. A construction company buys concrete from two suppliers. A key factor is the time it takes for the concrete to dry. There's concern that the dry time standard deviation for company two is greater than for company one. To test this statement, the company has tested six loads from company one and eight loads from company two. With the result showing here, that means a standard deviation for the six loads, 3.5 hours to dry. Standard deviation for eight loads, 5.1 hours to dry. We use 5% as significance level. Here's our hypothesis testing model. We test if the concrete from company 2 is greater than the concrete from company 1. And we can transform the model to the format described by variance. So we calculate the F test the statistic value by doing ratio of the two sample variances we got 2.1233. We can find this critical value based on the basic information provided. The critical value is 4.8759. Since F test the statistic value is smaller than 4.8759, we cannot reject we cannot reject now hypothesis. That means we cannot say the concrete from company two. F test statistic is also applied for one way analysis of variance. Here we have an example. A sandwich shop is interested in testing to see whether the mean value for customer orders is equal at companies of four store locations. Eight orders from each store are randomly selected. So here we have sandwich shop for four locations labeled as one two three and four each location we randomly pick up eight customer order values we try to use this sample data to tell if for these four sandwich shop locations they would come out equal 
average customer order values. So single factor we talk about is the store location and recorded by the customer order values. And store locations can also be considered as four levels. We cannot say the drying time, standard deviation for the concrete from company two is greater than the drying time standard deviation for the concrete from company one. This is the balanced design. We have same sample size for each population. And here's our hypothesis. We assume now hypothesis all the locations have equal average customer order values. Alternative hypothesis means not all of them are equal. So this kind of question is about we test multiple population means if they all equal. Or in other words, we test if one of the populations, the average value would be significantly different from the others. The way we do this kind of testing, and we try to find out all kinds of variances. So we calculate the grand mean, which is all the data values included, overall average. And we use this grand mean, we can measure the variation by add all the possible sum, uh, all the possible square differences together. Kind of like variance, but a different. We haven't done average yet. This is being said total variation from all the samples. With the grand mean considered, we can also calculate each column average listed at the bottom. And then we consider each columns by using college mean representing each individual value to calculate the overall variation again. This perspective gives us the idea we ignored the detailed difference within each column. Since we use each column center value represent every possible value. So this is called the sum square between. Individual value differences within each column or each level are ignored. And then we consider each sample or each column the value we have and we calculate the variance or the sum squares within each column and then put them together. So individually variation described by each column, this is what I call the sum square within. And we have the relationship sum square within and the sum square between together would be the sum square total. So the ratio basically comes from mean square between and mean square within. Mean square between comes from sum square between divided by the corresponding degrees of freedom. Mean square within comes from sum square within divided by the corresponding degree of freedom. So here's what we described earlier, corresponding degree freedom related to each sum square. From this F test the statistic value, and we can tell if there's a significant difference among multiple population means. Similar idea can also be applied in two-factor analysis variance. Here's our hypothesis model generally speaking. It is also called a one-way ANOVA 
or single factor ANOVA. We have this program built up in Excel analysis package and come out the main information listed in this ANOVA table and the relationship among this information are all very clear. Our testing logic or decision rules similar when f is bigger than f critical value we reject now hypothesis this is how we come out f ratio and the f distribution curves shows here basically the testing model would be the right side testing and the corresponding degrees freedom related to the sample size F critical value can be found from this Excel function when F test statistic value from sample data is greater than F critical value we reject the null hypothesis that means we do not agree all the population have equal means we can run single factor ANOVA the program in Excel directly Here's our example about the sandwich shop. Go to the data tab, data analysis. On the top of the list in the programs, ANOVA single factor. Choose our data range. Here's our data range. Populations or samples are listed by columns. So here we choose columns. They are also called levels. And we do have titles included in the first row of the columns. Default setting for significance level 5%, we use that. And then we can choose where we want to have output. For example, here, here's the result. So in this single factor ANOVA outcome, we have two part of the tables. The top part is the summary give us the descriptive statistics information about these four levels sample data. It shows each sample counts, total value, average of each sample, and the variance of each sample. At the bottom is ANOVA. It gives us the result of some square between, some square within, degree freedom, for some square between and some square within. Correspondingly, we have mean square between and mean square within. And then we come out F test the statistic value, which came from the ratio of mean square between divided by mean square within. And then P value, F critical value, all part of the outcome. It will be convenient. We use this values to make a conclusion about the hypothesis model. Here is the output of single factor ANOVA for the sandwich sales example. Three locations we have hypothesis testing model and with 5% significance level and all the information listed here you can see the relationship clearly. Mean square between, mean square within, they all come from some square between, some square within, divide by corresponding degrees of freedom. F critical value can be figured out from Excel statistical function directly. And here we can see the chart right tailed F test showing here and we check the result of F ratio test the statistic value 1.03 is smaller than F critical value 2.9467 so we cannot reject now hypothesis that means generally speaking three sandwich shop location would be expected same 
average customer order values. Here's another example. A health product company is experimenting with two new weight loss products. To determine the effectiveness of these products, 300 people, all of whom were 30 to 40 pounds overweight, were asked to participate in this study. 300 people are divided into three groups. 100 were given a placebo, 100 were given product 1, and another 100 were given product 2. None of them knew what product they had received. After 6 weeks, the company determined the number of pounds lost by each person. A positive value means the subject lost weight. Unfortunately, some people dropped out of the study, leaving 89 placebo group feedback received, a 91 product 1 and 83 product 2 subjects received final results. So the data are in an Excel file. We are testing if there's a significant difference for the result from product 1 or product 2. So our now hypothesis would expect the average weight loss are equal for the three groups. An opposite hypothesis would be at least one of them stand out different. This is the typical pattern or typical model experiment for testing the drug or product effectiveness. And we notice the different sample sizes. So this is unbalanced sample data resource and we can run this program in Excel conveniently. We use 5% significance level to run this program in Excel. Here's our data resource. We can see three groups receive the data being listed column by column. Column B, placebo. Column C, product 1. And column D, product 2. And we can also see at the end they do have different sample size. We go to data tab, data analysis. On the top, ANOVA single factor. Choose our data resource. Make sure all data collected included. Here we go. That's our data range. And the data being listed by column. And we do have title included. And we use the default setting. 5% significance level. And we choose our output area. Let's choose here, all right? And we click OK, all right. Here we have a first part about summary table. That's basic descriptive statistics. Result are listed here in the first table. So for three groups, placebo, product one, and product two, we have their counts total, average, and variance. And then followed with ANOVA. And in this ANOVA table, we can see some square, degree freedom, and mean square. We already explained the relationship of all this information. And here, F, test the statistic value, and F, critical value. That's what we are comparing. Since F test statistic value is bigger than F critical value, or we look at the p-value, it's quite a small, so we have strong or overwhelming evidence to reject now hypothesis. That means for these three groups, we cannot say they have equal average value turnout.
That means we make conclusion for the population behind. We can say either product one or product two shows significant difference. Shows significant different average weight loss compared to placebo. Similar idea can be applied to two-factor ANOVA. Sometimes we may consider our focus value being influenced by different uh, factors. Could be more than one factor. For example, a new fertilizer has been developed to increase the yield on crops and the makers of the fertilizer want to better understand which of the three formulations or being called the blends of this fertilizer are most effective for wheat, corn, soybeans, and rice. They test each of the three blends on one sample of each of the four types of crops. The crops yields for the 12 combinations are shown here. So we can see we have four crops, wheat, corn, soy, rice. They are listed column by column in our data collection. And then we have three blinds, blind X, Y, and Z. They all being applied for the different crops, but every blend being tested for only one crops once. That means in this table, for each joined two factors, we have only one observation. Different crop may have different yield, so that's one factor. We observe all this data, we try to see if there's a significant difference among these different crops. And another part, different formulation for the fertilizer is a factor. They affect the yield of the crops. And we try to see if there's a significant difference among these three blinds. So the blinds being listed row by row. For each joint factor, we have only one value being recorded. This kind of situation called without replication. One factor is a blind of fertilizer. Another factor is type of the crops. Samples from multiple populations of one factor are listed in rows. Samples from multiple populations of another factor are listed in columns. The situation that single value for each joined two factors is observed is called without replication. For each factor, we have multiple populations behind. So we have one hypothesis model, which is called primary or main factor test, normally being listed column by column. So our now hypothesis would be all the populations listed by columns have the equal average. For another factor, we also have a testing model that's called the secondary test. So they usually listed row by row, and we consider the population behind. So the testing now hypothesis would be all the population behind have the equal average value. For this example about the fertilizer and the crops, the two hypothesis models being listed here. Primary test would be claiming four crops have equal average yields. The secondary test would be three blinds have equal average yields. For this example, we can also run two-factor ANOVA without 
replication in Excel conveniently. Here's our raw data. Again, in the data tab, data analysis, we choose ANOVA two-factor without replication. Similarly, select our data range. We do have title included. We use 5% significance level default setting. And then we choose output. And the result all come out together. You can see the top title ANOVA two-factor without replication. And the summary table part, including for two factors separately, descriptive statistic information are all here. And the bottom, ANOVA outcome. Similar structure, we have some square between rows some square between columns, some square within, and then we have corresponding degree freedom, and we have mean square between rows, mean square between columns, and mean square within. It's also called mean square error. And similarly, we use mean square between divide by mean square error, and we come out 2F test statistic values, and then corresponding p-value and F critical values are listed here. So they can be used to make a conclusion about primary hypothesis and secondary hypothesis. Here's our raw data and our ANOVA output after running this program in Excel. We come out a two-factor ANOVA without replication. We read out the information for making conclusion our testing model. The second row for columns, F test the statistic value 2.63 is smaller than corresponding F critical value 4.75. We cannot reject the null hypothesis of the primary test. So we would accept that all the crops have the same average yields. From the first result, since F test the statistic value 12.83 is bigger than corresponding F critical value 5.14. We reject now hypothesis of the secondary test. It means that not all the fertilizer blend blends have the same yields. Here is the summary for two-factor ANOVA without replication. Similar relationship shows in the ANOVA table, like one factor ANOVA. Mathematical expression for the sum square between factor A, sum square between factor B, and the sum square within sum square total. Here we have another example. An airline is considering incentives for their customers to use their accumulated free air miles. Three incentive methods, cash, vacation, and online shopping, are considered. 48 customers were randomly selected and 16 were randomly assigned to each incentive method. The customers were equally divided into four age groups. The data representing the number of miles redeemed as shown in the table. So we have major factor for the redeeming method there's cash option, there's vacation option, 
there's online shopping option. The airline try to figure out if there's a significant difference for people to redeem their air miles for these different methods. And another part, the age being considered as the factor that may influence the redeeming miles for the redeeming method people used. So four age groups being set up under 25 years, 25 to 40 years, 41 to 60 years, over 60 years. For each age group, we observed four miles redeeming values for each redeeming method. This situation that multiple values for each joint two factors are observed is called width replication. We can see for each age group we have four records being observed. Since we have more information here and we will be able to answer more hypotheses situation. For factor A, our major factor, we try to see if all the populations behind come with equal average value. For factor B, secondary factor, we like to know if all the populations behind have the equal average value. With multiple information being recorded for different levels of factor B and we get a chance to look at interaction situation. This is about if we can recognize factor A and factor B interact each other to influence the average value. The process is similar. We find out all the sum square. So sum square total, sum square between factors, and sum square interaction. This is additional message because of the replication situation. And then we have sum square error or called sum square within. They have a similar relationship like what we have observed before. The average value being used to describe the different kind of variances. We have grand mean, mean of each level for factor A, mean of each level for factor B, and mean for each cell. By using this mean, we find out the mean square factor A, mean square for factor B, mean square for interaction, mean square for the within, or called the error and they have similar relationship, all come with the sum square divided by corresponding degrees of freedom. And then we build up the two-factor ANOVA with replication result with the four mean square values. We develop 3F test statistic value. Using those 3F test statistic value, and we can make conclusion about the three hypotheses. For factor A, multi-population behind, we want to know if they all have the equal center value. F test statistic value for factor A can be used to make decision if F test the statistic value for factor A is bigger than corresponding critical value, we reject this hypothesis. Now hypothesis. Similarly, we use F test the statistic value for factor B if the value is bigger than corresponding significance level, we reject now hypothesis for factor B. And we have the F test statistic value for interaction. If F test statistic value is bigger than corresponding critical value, 
We reject the null hypothesis for interaction. That means the factors A and B they do interact each other. For this airline example, we can also run the program in Excel directly. It is called ANOVA two factor with replication. From data tab, click data analysis. Then we can see the second in the list, ANOVA two factor with replication. Choose our data range. There's extra option in this dialog window called rows per sample. Since we do have replication for each joint of two factors, we have multiple observations. In our case, we can see for each age group, there are four values observed. So in that case, rows per sample, we give the value four. And we still use default setting 5% significance level. And then we choose where we are going to have output. Here we go. Click OK. Here's our output. We can see more outcome in this uh, output. Again, we have summary tables. And here we have multiple summary tables since we have replication involved in. So for each group, the descriptive statistics information being listed separately. And then followed, we have a summary table for total overall situation. At the bottom, we have ANOVA outcome. And here, we noticed we have some square between rows, some square between columns, and some square interaction, and some square within that is also called some square error. Correspondingly, we have degree freedom. We have mean square between rows, mean square between columns, mean square for interaction, and mean square within, or called error. And we have three F test statistic values, as well as corresponding p-values and F critical values. They are used for making conclusion about three hypothesis models involved in two-factor ANOVA with replication. Here is the ANOVA output for the example of the airline researching redeeming methods and age groups. When we handle this situation with replication, we test the interaction between two factors first. The null hypothesis is factors A and B do not interact to affect the mean response. Only if we accept null hypothesis for this interaction situation, we have the sense to move forward to find out hypothesis test for factor A and factor B. If for this first step, we reject null hypothesis. That means two factors, A and B, they do interact each other. In that case, the value we have observed would not be reliable for us to continue performing the test for factor A and factor B separately. From this result, we see the third F test statistic value for interaction 0.29 is smaller than 2.364. In that case, we 
can accept interaction is not present between the age group and incentive type. So we can move forward to perform the other two tests about factor A and factor B. For the primary hypothesis test, we try to see if the three redeeming methods turn out have equal redeeming miles from the second F test statistic value for the columns. 0.59 is smaller than corresponding critical value 3.259. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. We have to accept that all three incentives have equal average redeeming error miles. For the secondary hypothesis test model, we want to see if all the four different age groups would turn out with equal average redeeming error miles from the first F test statistic value 0.22 smaller than corresponding F critical value 2.866 so we cannot reject this null hypothesis. We would have to say that all four age groups have equal average redeeming error miles.